Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to finalize the setting of our app. In the previous video, we learned how you can configure your uh, active team in the store. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can close this dialog and we will learn how you can save data into database like the setting. So currently, when you click configure, it is going to add the data to the file, but it is not closing uh, the model window here. So it returns a success. So if I come to the code that we have written in the previous video this is all we have done I'll close everything and then I will start again so from here we are going to of course use the dashboard file so we open the dashboard which is the partial that we have included here and also the function that we have here which is going to run a setup it is going to run a post request to our backend and I'm going to open this portal also. So it was activate model. When someone click on this one, it is going to call this JavaScript function, which run an Ajax request. Now, if you want to close that model window that appears here, if I check the documentation of the Alpine JS, here is the, uh, a good example that they give you. You can directly write your JavaScript file inside the function on click. Let's say on mouse enter, they are doing this fetch request which is like another option but it happens on click too here is how you can do this one if i come to my code instead of running this code inside a separate function we can directly run it here if i just write it in a new line now we can send an ajax request and it is it should work just fine the same way as it was working if i save it for now Let's see, it is a lot clean. Now, it is the new way of writing your JavaScript and HTML for HTML code together. It looks a little messy, but this is how you should do after this. And now I will refresh my page. The model window appear. If I click on the configure, it is going to return a success like 200 message, which is fine. Now, the good thing is now I can handle the success here. Then is called, as I said in the previous video, then is called when the request is successful a uh, catch is called when you have an error so we'll figure out like how you can respond to the error also in the future video but for now if it was successful i'm going to say open is equal to false which open i'm talking about the open data that i have defined here if you have watched the previous video you know how it was if it is it, beca it become false then the extra will hide it if i save it for now as you know then will be called only if it is successful so if i come to my app here now you refresh it click on the configure it send the ajax request to the backend and this is how it works it will close it now the thing is like if you refresh it now again it will show up again now is the time you have to understand how you have to save those data inside a database and then you can see okay the current is store has activated the team like we have uh, injected our code inside the active team in this store now that is where you have to store your data in the database so i will do that next now we could do we could hide this with javascript but it should be hidden like it shouldn't show in the next refresh that is what i will do now now in the previous video you learned about uh, database if i open my database migration and here is the sitting table we have Currently, we have one field, one table called setting. I will check uh, SQL Pro also. This is the setting and this is the structure of my table. Now, I need another field here. This field is going to be a string. And a string is going to store the shop ID here. I'm going to call it shop ID. It can be unlike uh, actual shop ID but the thing is you can store the unique URL of your store for example this that you have here this is called the shop domain in Shopify this is going to be unique for every store so what you can do is you can store this one instead of the shop ID as a string that will be like unique so you can use the unique function here or you can just directly specify it like this so oops i forgot to put the variable table here that's why it is not auto completing now this is how it works 
now if you want to make it a little more more secure in database level you can make this one unique also so it should be unique as a function and now this field will be unique and you cannot duplicate this one so i hope it is clear it is in a database level you can do this one in php too but this is fine for now now i am going to um, remove the database that, that the table that i have here the sitting and i'm going to remigrate again if you don't know about migration this is the last table i have created and the patch is going to be two it means if i come to my code editor and say php artisan and migrate rollback it is going to remove the last table i have created now it remove this one i can migrate it again now if i check out like refresh the database and go to the setting now i have the shop id here and this is the structure of my table now it is fine all i have to do is set the shop id here and see if the theme was activated or not that is where i do in the controller so i will open the setting controller this is where you can do this is the last request we send to the current store it is going to add our file and after that one now i'm going to say save data into database which is our database now i can use setting here and laravel has a function called create which you can create data but there is another called update or create if you don't know about this one check out the documentation of laravel and here is update or create it means if the data already exists update it if it doesn't exist create it which does not create any issue for us so this is basically how it works like i can literally copy this code here and coming to the code editor and instead of this one we put this data here now it will accept some array now for us i'm not going to put any more information here so what i am going to save here is the shop id and how i'm going to grab the shop id i'm going to use the shop here and the name of it if you check out the user table here you know the user table have this name and this name is going to be unique for example i have installed it in two stores and now i will use this one so what i will do is i will come here as you know shop is going to get the authenticated user it means shop will have access to the name so i will say shop name it should be for name it is fine and activated should be equal to true which is like a variable here you can set it true so that is fine for now and this is all you have to do now the next thing you have to do is you know in laravel you cannot create anything with eloquent like this you have to specify that these are fill level properties for example if i come to the user.php here you know we have some fill level property here it means if you want to use the create or update uh, function uh, this field should be fillable so that that way you can do otherwise you will get an error called mass assignment exception which is common in laravel so i'll copy this code from user table i'll paste it here and say shop underscore id in my settings table is going to be fillable also the activated we don't have the password so that's fine i will save it now let's see if our code is working fine i haven't done it so i'll come here i refresh it for now if you check the database setting we do not have any data now i will click on the configure it ran the configuration it closed it we don't have any error let's check if we have data in our database you refresh it yes here it is and the activation is equal to one now you have saved the data into database all you have to do is in the next refresh get those data from database and tell like check if that data exists do not show the activate model so how you do that one we'll open the web here this is where we view our dashboard so before you view the dashboard what i can do is i can send the setting to the dashboard so in here i'm going to define a variable 
called setting and it is going to let's say app when you say app it is going to the app directory that we have here here and then it is going to we, we can search for the setting let's say I'm going to the setting which is app setting when you I have like a setting in my editor that's why it will automatically import the setting otherwise you can just directly put it here and now I can say where shop ideas going to be equal to the shop ID how I can get the shop ID the same thing that I used in the setting controller I need this one in my web also so I will come to the web here I will paste it here and again I have to import this one so all I have to do is if my editor can import this one if not like if you can't import it like me you can just copy it and then go to the web.php and import it here so that's it you save it now you will have access to the setting now what you can say if that is equal to shop dot that no it should be name and then you can say first you can grab the first one of them now that's it and it should work just fine it will grab this shop name from here it will put it okay i should put the dollar sign and this one should be also where and that's fine it will take it and put it in the setting and i will just use the compact the compact is the function that you can send the setting to your view which is the dashboard now you will have access to the settings okay i should correctly name this one now if i come to the setting here to the dashboard page i do have access to the setting which means if i output dollar sign settings it should show the setting for me here now i will refresh it to see if i am right yes here is the data that i am talking about as you know it is activated equal to one now i will write a condition here and see if it was like if it is not equal to one then show this one so i can use b if which is like a boilerplate for me i can see if dollar sign settings activated is not equal to one you can just say not which means if it is not true show this one that's it i will save it let's come to our code here refresh it you don't see the model which is fine now if i come to my database let's say i make it zero which is not activated you refresh it and here you go like you get this model and you click configure it is going to run the script in the background and successfully close this one if i come to the dashboard page again it is not going to show me because it was already like successfully added so every time it is going to check for that if it is in your database fine if not it is going to warn you because your app should work just fine it is going to check the file exists or not so that's it for this video on how it has been informative and that is how you put all uh, other sitting in your database in our app we have only those two settings but there are like apps you are building it has multiple options for the user for your clients you might have like maybe 10 or 20 settings all those settings can be stored in the setting table here that way it will be unique to that store for example if i check the sql pro here now you can have let's say an option for email an option for like username an option for how you want to display the wishlist icon all of those will be stored here so that's it for this video and in the next video we are going to explore how we can implement this one in the front end and we will learn more about this one